just stay in this moment. Just stay in this moment. We don't want to. Let's hold on to this moment right here. You are Emmanuel. You are God with us. That's what that means. Emmanuel means God with us. You love us so much that you love to dwell among us. You love to be with us. You are Emmanuel. Just worship him right now. Just worship. Worship him. He's longing to be with us right now. Embrace him. Embrace his presence right now. Lord, we embrace you right now, Lord. You call us your sons and daughters. You embrace us. We embrace you. We come to you with no fear, with your brave. <laughs> you make us brave because of your love. Perfect love, cast out all fear. Oh God. Oh God. You alone are worth the glory. Let's sing that one more time. I feel it. Alone defeated hell. To you. victorious. You're a glorious God and we give you praise this morning. <laughs> we come to give all of our praise to you, God. <laughs> There's nobody like you, Jesus. David said you are God alone <laughs> and there's nobody like you. So Father, we give you praise. We give all of our praise to you. We lay down all of our problems to you. <laughs> We lay down the world's issues to you this morning, and we say you alone are worth the glory, yes! You alone are worth the praise, yes! To you alone our knees are bending, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I have a word. And I'd like for our brother, our docile, to come. When I heard this word, I heard it in Spanish first. <laughs> and then I heard it for us to release it in English. So I'd like for him to release that word in Spanish, and then we'll release it in English. Praise God, because he's a lot of language. Yes. <laughs> Porque yo lo digo... Levanten mis niños, levántense mis niños, mis hijos. Ay, se, sorry. Les digo, levántense. Pónganlo ahí. Pónganlo en, ante mí. Pónganse ante mí. Yo los voy a liberar. Yo soy el liberador. Yo soy el guerrero. Yo soy la victoria. Victoria viene ante mí porque yo la doy. Recuerden esto, yo soy la victoria. 
For I say unto you, my child, arise, my children. I say, arise, press in, press into me. I am the deliverer. I am the warrior. I am victory. I am that I am, says the Lord, because victory comes because I have given you victory. Remember, I am victory. For I say unto you, arise, my children. I say, arise, press in, press into me. I am the deliverer. I am the warrior. I am victory. I am that I am. Victory comes because I have given you victory. Remember, I am victory. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We received the victory this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. You are the victor. Therefore, we are victorious. So whatever your situation is this morning, you can stamp it as victory. You can, you can stamp it as the battle is won already. I heard somebody say that. We don't fight for the victory. We fight from the victory. Yes. The victory is already ours. <laughs> We're just reestablishing that on the earth. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. The victory is already in our grasp. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Let's give God one more shout of praise. Hallelujah. You are so worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he says, when you've done all that you can do, you stand. So if you have a situation this morning and you've done all that you can do, he says, stand. And then see, therefore, the salvation of the Lord. That's victory. So we want to encourage you this morning, whatever your situation is, the word is victory, so we're going to stand and watch him do it. We're going to stand and watch the victory. Could you imagine seeing Goliath and David didn't already have in his mind that this battle's already won? I see you, but you going down. <laughs> Think about your situation this morning. I see but you going down because God's given us victory amen hallelujah thank you for that worship you guys may be seated <laughs> how are y'all doing today <laughs> all right <laughs> If you guys don't know, my name is Pastor Paula. This is my wife, Shane Lynn. We are associate pastors of, of Living Word Church here, and we want to bring you a great word that the Lord has been on, putting on our hearts. And um, just want to thank Pastors Cliff and April for giving us the opportunity to, to uh, minister what's in our hearts and, and just, just give what we have, what God has given us to you all. And I, I just pray today that, that we receive what God has for you today <laughs> to the fullest. I don't want you guys to, to hold back. I don't want you to say, I'm not qualified for it. God says, this is yours. Take it. Take it. <laughs> Take it. Mm. Can we Jesus give honor God. to our senior pastors of Living Word Church for a moment? <laughs> pastors Cliff and April Briscoe. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. So at the end of service, uh, we, we want to really reach out and pray for you, but don't leave because we have some announcements that we want to reiterate. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask Carol Poole to come up and she's going to speak about the marriage conference that's coming up um, at the end of service. <laughs> and and we, we, were, we, we want to uh, make sure that everybody knows what's going yes. on yeah. because we want to be fully involved 
um, we want you to be fully involved in what the Lord is doing. We've got so much ministry that's been happening this year. Rafa is open. We've got uh, many more conferences coming out uh, this year as well. So, are y'all ready to get into the Word of God? Yeah. Y'all ready? All right, we got good worship. We, you know, when I was trying to get into the Word, um, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for what you're doing today, Lord. Use, use us, oh God, as, as your message, messengers, <laughs> as your people to, to bring out what you want to say, Lord. And, and Father, we don't want to edit. We don't want to cut out anything that uh, the Lord wants us to have uh, spoken through us, Father. So, so use us, Lord, as, and we just humble ourselves before you, knowing that this is your word, this is your service, yes. and we just say thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to receive. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody got their Bibles? Don't make me pull my Bible out. <laughs> Electronic and hard copy. <laughs> We've got uh, technology loves to, um, has diversified things. Not just music, but, you know, you can actually get the word in your apps. And so that's a great um, opportunity um, that, that God has used through Internet to make sure we can get the word of God in us. So... We can't just uh, blame internet as a saying it's evil. There's a lot of evil that's done through the internet and through technology, but but God's still behind everything else. So let's go ahead and get to the Word of God. Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. And this is mainly what I'm going to be uh, preaching from and teaching from, uh, demonstrating from today, because God wants. God wants us to demonstrate his spirit today, and I want to make sure that I am sensitive to that, and I, mean, I want to make sure that you all are touched deeply. God is wanting to, he's, he's wanting to reach out. There's this intimacy that God is wanting us to have with him, and he wants us to touch him, and it's funny how God spoke to the earth. He spoke to the earth, said, let there be light, let there be this and that, but he used his hands to create man and form dust. And so there's that closest, that intimacy that, that God has for his people because he made us after his image. So in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And, and I'm... Uh, reading from the New American Transla uh, Standard Bible, New American Standard. And verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'll repeat verse 7 because that is the main thing. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds through, and in Christ Jesus. Some versions say through Christ Jesus. Um, but I'm, I'm going to uh, break down and, and kind of decipher what Paul is saying to the uh, Philippian church in here. Uh, because there's a lot of meat in, that, in those two verses. There's a lot of meat in there, so we want to break that down. <laughs> And, and get into it. But the main thing I want to really express, uh, the Lord has put on my heart to express, is peace should be rested in us and not be based on what is around us. Peace should be based on what's in us and not be based on what is around us. And so there's a lot of chaos going on. We have um, a, a lot of things going on in our lives. Uh, people of all walks of life, rich or poor, they want one common thing, and that's inner peace. So you see the, 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 um, the poor, they have, they're trying to figure out where, where am I going to get this? Where should I pay this? Where am I going to live? Where, where am I going to eat? And then you've got 
The other end of the spectrum, there's people that are trying to uh, manipulate them. There's people that are trying to take over their business or take over or, or try to um, sabotage everything that they've built because there's people that are so, uh, <laughs> you don't know who to trust. Uh, when you have so much power and so much, uh, you know, so much, um, what do you call it, influence. Yeah. When you got so much power and influence that people want to try to take that. So there's, everybody needs peace. <laughs> everybody needs it. And there's some misconceptions that the world has about peace. And the biggest thing is what, what I just talked about is that everybody has to be in a physical place. You don't have to be in a, in a peaceful place uh, to experience peace. So if you close your eyes and imagine what peace will look like, you could think of uh, a sandy beach, palm trees, uh, lounging, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sipping on a lemonade or whatever, um, not an alcoholic drink, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and enjoying the, the waves and the, the breeze and the seagulls, you know, in, in the background. And I know you guys imagine this right now. I know you guys are creating a mental vision. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give y'all a mental vision of that. But th that's what peaceful means. I know, I know Dave knows from Jamaica about the beaches and beautiful beaches there, man. <laughs> I wish uh, I would like to go there one day, experience that. Anyway, uh, but peace, <laughs> I don't have to go to Jamaica on the beach to get peace. So <laughs> peace is something that God wants us to attain regardless of what the situation is, regardless of what's going on around us. Amen? All right, so let's go into this. There's three things that I want to point out about peace. Number one is peace is not passive. Peace is not passive, all right? Um, in fact, peace is a warrior. If you're looking at the, the song that we sang today about the gracious tempest, it's like a, a sandstorm. Peace is like a sandstorm that um, I was just imagining this, and, and um, I was looking at a sandstorm because sandstorms, they, they take away the visibility. You can't see what's around you. It kind of, it pretty much, you're engulfed in it. There's nothing you can, you don't, you can't see nothing. You don't know what's going on. You just, you just engulfed in dirt. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Um, I saw, I saw a sandstorm in Phoenix a few years ago when they had a bad sandstorm, and it was a view from the helicopter, and it was pretty, it was pretty frightening, pretty terrifying, uh, <laughs> because you see the, the the skyscrapers in Phoenix, and then there's this huge cloud of sand that's even taller than the skyscrapers coming closely. You could just see it just suck up Phoenix, Arizona, and one block by another. And I'm looking like, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> but God's peace is like that. that is, there could be a lot of chaos that's going on, but that peace just, just takes and goes shh. And you just feel a whole realm of, just like, what is this coming from? <laughs> You can't think about, you can't do anything, you, you can't see nothing around. You, all you can do is just stand still and wait for the storm to be over. That's that powerful peace that God is asking about, okay? And peace don't mean quiet either, okay? Peace don't mean quiet. Uh, because a lot of times we can be passive about peace. And... There's times where we let things slide, let things go on for too long and linger. I know I, I'm talking to myself too, because there's times where I have to say, okay, let's, let's deal with this thing here. And uh, sometimes it's great to avoid some conflicts at times, but there are some times where you need to just say something or do something. I'm like, you know what? I I love you, Mom, or I love you, Dad, but, you know, this is wrong. This is sinful, you know. Uh, gossip is wrong. Uh, you know, you, you just have to point out sin. Point it out in a loving way, uh, you know, to speak the truth in love. You just got to speak the truth in love. And, and, and so there's a, it doesn't mean that to go ferocious and, you know, have all guns blazing, but you just have to have wisdom and say, hey, you know, 
this, we, we, we can't do this. This is not right. This is not what God has for our lives. And, and <laughs> you know, this, we just have to talk it out, work things out. Um, and that's the big thing right there. Number two, and this is really, uh, really kind of clarifying one thing. I noticed, especially when Paul and Peter, they addressed the church, uh, the, the churches that they were over, and they say, grace and peace be unto you. Okay? Uh, so I put grace and peace are cousins, okay? <laughs> they're kind of like, like on the same team, like Durant and Westbrook, okay? Grace and peace are they're like Durant, Westbrook, uh, and I don't know if you guys are deep sports fans, but Jordan and Pippen. Uh, I'm not a Lakers fan now. I, I would say Kobe and Shaq, but I, I'm not a Lakers fan, so I won't say that. Um, <laughs> I'm not hating on the Lakers, but I'm just saying. I'm not a Lakers fan. Um, but they are, they run together. Those two run together. If there is no peace, then that's not true grace. So people that say that, <laughs> oh, yeah, the grace of God, I can just do whatever I want to do because I'm covered by God's grace. But if it's not, if there's no peace there, that's not grace. <laughs> that's not God's grace, that is, okay? And vice versa, the peace of God helps us live gracefully, okay? So, so if you have the peace of God in you, then you can move gracefully. You know, it, you seem like a figure skater, you know, d- doing all those things there. That's, that's what graceful means, living a life gracefully. And, and it gives you a peace because you know you, 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 you're walking in God's grace, and it gives you that peace at the same time. So they are, they're cousins, okay? They, they're, they're, they're really close uh, together, all right? And the biggest enemy, biggest enemy of peace is anxiety. Biggest enemy of peace is anxiety. Anxiety is the cause of fear, anger, and worry. All that is, is rooted in anxiety, okay? Um, let's go to Mark, and I just had this in my spirit. Um, Mark chapter 4. It's going to be verse uh, 35. Let's go ahead and start Mark four thirty-five, And this is where Jesus stills the sea, okay? So they're in the midst of the storm. And, and everything that's going on. Um, all right, so let's, let's just go into the Word. Everybody there? I'm going to give some time for everybody to get there. All right. On that day when the evening came, he said to them, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with them, with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Wow. And Jesus himself was in the stern, okay, asleep on the cushion. They awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? (laughs) And then they became very much afraid and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? Wow. So you look in this scenario, look at this scripture, and you see how Jesus they, they looked and they saw what was going on in that situation. Jesus was so, he was asleep, okay? <laughs> Doing all this stuff that was going on. I mean, how can you be, they're looking at him like, how can you be asleep at a time like this, okay? So, so the disciples were in anxiety. They were actually past anxiety. They were, they, they were in panic mode, okay? <laughs> they were like, Jesus, we're dying. Don't you see that we're dying right now? That's pretty much what a lot of translations are saying. We're, it's like, don't you care that we're dying right now? That we're about to drown? <laughs> they got so engulfed in their anxiety that they didn't see that, acknowledge the fact that Jesus was asleep. 
If you, if you, if they really want to see what Jesus, what was going on, why Jesus was asleep, because he had the power over the winds and the waves. If you know who was in control, <laughs> if they looked over there and saw Jesus sleeping at the end of the boat, they were like, you know what? He's sleeping. Why is he sleeping? <laughs> sometimes we forget who's on the boat. Sometimes we forget who's on the boat. And, <laughs> and there's a lot of triggers of anxiety. I'm about to dig into this, okay? Um, just looking at the disciples and, and how they see that they, they were so afraid of the winds and the waves. And, and then they finally saw how Jesus was even how much authority he had, how much power he had over these waves, that a lot of times we get so caught up in our situation that we forget who's in the boat. We forget who's in control, okay? But there's some major major triggers um, of anxiety. And, of course, course in America, the best thing is media. Uh, That's the biggest culprit. Social media, uh, the news, newspaper, um, anything that you see news on um, these days, uh, politics, the election year this year, uh, people just going up in flames about that this year. Um, even sports, too. You know, people just like, man, them, I wish them soon as would. <laughs> or, man, I, what's, what's going on? You know, you just see them throwing, throwing stuff at the TV. And, <laughs> and you know, when your favorite team loses, they really kind of, you know, you were like, what's going on? And some people have different things like, you know what, well, let's, let's do this and we'll scream at the TV and nobody, nobody can hear you through the TV. Uh, just, I just want to let y'all know, they can't hear you. They can't. <laughs> no beast mode? No, I was, I was joking. What the, still looking at last year's Super Bowl. Why didn't they give it to the best running back in the league. But anyway, um, I was, I'm just going to keep, yeah, peace of God. Okay. Um, <laughs> being preoccupied is another trigger of peace. Because you feel like you always have to do something or I got to make sure this is right. I got to make sure this is right. Um, I get calls and text messages. Hey, what's up? What's going on? And what, you know, what's doing this? Even pastors, we as well, we can get caught up in being preoccupied with, with our ministries, um, getting so busy and, and caught up making sure everything's all right, but we neglect our inner, and our inner part. We, we, we neglect our inner beings, okay? Um, and, and that is very dangerous because uh, we can work ourselves to, to death. We can work ourselves to, to, to getting us sick. We're not taking care of our bodies during that time because we are so caught up in what's going on and what we need to do that were neglected. Um, even families are neglected. A lot, a lot of people that work jobs and, and try to make ends meet, or multiple jobs, trying to make ends meet, and, you know, the family is the, the victim of that. We don't spend enough time with our family, um, try, trying to do this and make sure bills are paid. And so that is a, a key trigger uh, to some of the things, okay? Um, let's go to, uh, back to Philippians, okay? Because we want to, I know I pointed out the problems, <laughs> the triggers, but how to do that, okay? So this is how I break down, that's how we're breaking down that scripture back in Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7, okay? I'm trying to get there myself, lost my place. All right. Philippians 4, 7 pretty much says, or oh, verse 6, apologize, verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. <laughs> so that's the biggest thing. That's, that's the key thing to do. The Noah says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer, okay? So in praying and supplication, with thanksgiving. <laughs> with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So as we request, make a request known, Paul checks it. He says, with thanksgiving. (laughs) He says, thank you 
for answering my prayer, Lord. Thank you that my needs will be met. Thank you that I have victory over my enemies. <laughs> so, let your request be made known to God in thanksgiving, okay? And so, this peace of God that, that he just, just blows out the water, he just knocks us out of the ballpark, okay? So, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses, okay? So, surpassing, it doesn't just pass it, but it surpasses. You're talking about a complete defeat, not just by one point or by two points, but you're talking about 30, 45, you're talking about a blowout. <laughs> Let this peace that blows out all comprehension, all understanding, okay? So, there, so there's no equal party here. This is peace that, that is so powerful that you can't do nothing about it. The, 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 the peace, let it guard your heart. Let it guard your mind. Let it guard it, protect it. Jesus told his disciples back in John 14, verse 1, it says, do not let your heart be troubled, okay? Do not let your heart be troubled. And so the peace that surpasses all understanding guards your heart and mind. So your heart, what, what, how you feel and how you think. Let the peace guard what, how you feel and how you think. Okay? Because we don't want our hearts to get hard. We don't want our minds to be messed up. Okay? This keeps our minds stayed on Jesus. And it's actually... So the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, all understanding, everything that we say, what is going on? What's going on here? We always have a, 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 a knack for trying to figure out things. We always have a knack for trying to, trying to see what can I do? What, what's going on with this? All this stuff that's going on today. Who's going to be the next president? <laughs> Police brutality. Cops getting killed. Wars going on. ISIS, all this stuff like that. Peace. Like a sandstorm, just suck that all up. Suck it all up. Let it guard your heart. Let it guard your mind. Let it guard that. We have to. God wants us, wants us to experience that peace. I don't care what it looks like. God wants it. God wants you to have that peace. Don't say I'm not qualified. I can't, I can't get it. I can't get this peace. There's too much going on. There's too much going on. I can't experience this peace. No, you can. You can. You can. God wants you to have peace. We speak peace. We declare peace over our household. We, we, we speak peace over our families. We speak peace over whatever situation we have at our jobs, over our businesses, over our finances. Let peace just come and surpass everything that's going on. We thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Glory to God. And I want to conclude with this. Let peace, let peace be your dwelling place. Let peace be your dwelling place. Even though the boat, even though the boat's rocky, remember who's asleep in the boat. Remember who's asleep in the boat. To be asleep, you have to really, whew. Of course, I had kids too, boy. It takes a while to get them girls to bed, boy. I'll tell you right now. To, to get <laughs> but that type of peace, to know that you, he's got, that Jesus is asleep during this time, of chaos and turmoil. There's no one that, you know what? Jesus is asleep right now, so I don't have to worry about a thing. He's got me. 
He's got me. We need that peace. We need that peace. I want everybody to stand and um, for those who have not experienced or haven't received Christ in their life, they won't be able to experience this peace because it comes through Christ Jesus that we have this peace. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we have that peace. You got something, babe? Go ahead. The, the definition of peace is freedom from disturbance, quiet and tranquility. Freedom from or the cessation of war or violence. But the, the one I wanted to focus in on, it says freedom from disturbance quiet and tranquility. We could make a list, probably every person in here could make a list of things that could be considered a disturbance to us. You know, it could be job, it could be family, it could be friends, it could be your car, it could be, you know, we could just keep going on and on. You could say, look at my list, my list is bigger than yours, my list, is, you know, look at that, I need a book for mine, you know, so we could make a list and list and we can say all these things that could be considered a disturbance. But peace, when God gives it to you, think about Jesus in that boat with the disciples. I would have thought the disciples would have been already prepared for peace. I would have thought they already would have automatically, as a natural reaction, followed Jesus in the boat. I would have thought Jesus asleep we're rolling with you, you know what I mean? I'm sleeping and relaxing too, right? <laughs> but they were over the edge, like, oh, the winds are blowing. Jesus, help us. You know, some, like some of us do, oh, help us. You know, I got this going on. I need to call everybody. You know, but because we'll read the news and we'll believe Shawnee news before we believe the Bible. We'll, we'll log on to yahoo.com and we'll read that. Oh, something just exploded over in Bangladesh, and we believe that before we believe God's word. But Jesus said, I've given you power, power over the enemy. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord, if you have accepted Christ, is upon you. So in the inside of you, have that peace. So to what we want is that right now for you to think about whatever may be a disturbance to you, whatever has been, maybe this week, maybe you need to lay aside this week. Maybe it's been a couple of months and you get the same thing or, or it's the same thing that's a disturbance. Or maybe it's been years and it's the same thing that's a disturbance. Today, we want you to experience the power of Christ in the form of peace. God said, I am peace. I am peace. So when you have God, you have peace. When you have God, you can have peace inside of you. Regardless of what's going on, you can have the fullness of peace, not just a little bit. I remember when our girls, when we had them, and they would be running fevers or just things that babies do as they're growing older, and I would pass one of them, Paul, and he would just sit there and he'd hold them because he had a, just a peace on them. And they'd be out, just like, I was like, really? <laughs> just, just because of the peace of God, the peace of God. And then I'd start saying, okay, here we go. <laughs> the peace of God. So you can have that peace that you can go and you can say, Father, I'm lifting whatever this is up to you, and I'm going to have peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In, in my heart, the thoughts about it, whatever the thoughts are, I'm thinking it, but I want to have peace in my heart. You, you, you can speak peace because he says, I've given you life and death. Life and death is in the power of your tongue, so you can speak peace in your home. I declare peace. 
I declare peace. I declare peace over my children. I declare peace over our family members. I declare peace in Shawnee. We do that often when we're driving. We declare peace in this city. Peace in this city. Peace, where our peace needs to be, we declare it. So we declare peace to this body this morning. We declare peace. I would like for you to lift your hands this morning. Any area that you need peace, shandoromasia, yekodoromasia. We release the peace of God right now. The peace of God. Let it explode. Let it surpass. Let it explode. Let it surpass this morning. Shandoromasia. Everything. God, you said, let us arise. Let peace arise. Let peace arise. Let peace arise. Shandoromasia. Well, they can see it, they can feel it, the top of their heads, God, down to the soles of their feet, the peace of God. When they go home today, God, they're going to feel your peace. When they leave this building, they're going to feel your peace, God. Because you've surpassed it. You've already surpassed it. Your presence today has already exploded. And you can carry that. We can carry that with us. Jesus, you said that if I be in you and if you be in me, we can ask anything in your name and you would do it. That's peace. Knowing that we have a loving Father that takes care of us. That's peace. And I speak peace to minds right now. I speak peace to minds physically in the name of Jesus. I bind up in every spirit, in every voice that's speaking that doesn't need to be speaking to our minds. In the name of Jesus, we, com- we, j- we command you to no longer speak negative things to our minds as a body. And that the peace of God will rest in our minds. And that a clarity, I release clarity, that a, that a clear view of who you are is established. Let it be established, God. Let it be established. So that this year, this body will fulfill what you said this body is going to fulfill. This year, we're going to fulfill your promises that you said that this body would fulfill. This year, this body is going to fulfill the promises that you said this body will fulfill. This year. So we, we, we receive that peace that this year is done. This year is done. This year is done. This year we stand on your word. This year. This year we see it this year. If you got dreams that you've been dreaming about, he tells us in Habakkuk 2, write them down. Write the vision and make it plain. You can see that this year. Peace. Peace. You've got things you've been hoping and believing God for, and it seems like it's not coming to pass. Peace. You be at peace and watch him do it. Peace. I want you to take a moment. Let's tune our ears in. And let's listen for the voice of the Lord. Let's tune our spirits in and let's listen to what he's saying about you. What he's saying about your home. What he's saying about your church. What he's saying about your city. That you can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. You can tune your ears in. You can tune your spirit in to hear. Peace. 